Hello and welcome to this Amcrest tutorial. Today we're going to cover the installation and setup of Amcrest Surveillance Pro, as well as briefly go over some key features of this highly stable surveillance software. To download the software, open a web browser and go to amcrest.com and navigate over to the blue support tab and click on apps and software. Amcrest Surveillance Pro is available for download for Windows and Mac. Please note, the Mac version will not have all the features available compared to the Windows version. The installation and setup process is very similar for both. Before continuing, please be sure you are running Windows 7 or later. On Mac, please be sure you have Mac OS X version 10.7.5 Lion or later. Select the Amcrest Surveillance Pro link under your type of computer operating system to proceed. In this video, we're using a Windows PC, so we'll select the link under PC Windows. Next, click on the Amcrest Surveillance Pro download link to download the software to your computer. Once downloaded, the software will be available in the Downloads folder. Open your Downloads folder and double-click the Amcrest Surveillance Pro file. If using Windows, it will have a .exe file extension, or on a Mac, a .bz2 extension. The Windows file can be double-clicked to start installation directly. The Mac file will need to be unzipped first, and then double-click to install. With Mac installations, please note that you may need to drag and drop the Amcrest Surveillance Pro icon to the Applications folder on the right if prompted. When opening the file in Windows, a warning prompt will appear, asking do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device. And on Macs, the prompt says Amcrest Surveillance Pro can't be open because it is from an unidentified developer. To continue, simply click Yes or OK. On Windows, the Install window will appear, where you can click Next to proceed. Accept the terms of the End User License Agreement and click Next a couple more times. Then click Install. After the application is installed, select Run Surveillance Pro and click Finish to launch the program. On Mac, once the program is installed, return back to your Downloads folder and double-click the Amcrest Surveillance Pro application. Another prompt may appear confirming you want to open the app. Simply click the Open button to continue. The Amcrest Surveillance Pro login interface will appear. For your first time logging in, you'll be prompted to set an administrator or login password. This is the password you will use to log in to the Surveillance Pro software. Log in to your account by using the default username admin and the password you just created. Then click the Login button when done. Once you log in, you'll be automatically directed to the Amcrest Surveillance Pro main interface. Here, the Devices tab is open and ready for you to search for and add devices. To provide the highest efficiency and security when adding a device into Amcrest Surveillance Pro, it is highly recommended to add the device using a direct IP address as opposed to using a P2P connection. Using a direct IP provides a direct connection to your device without the use of utilizing a P2P server. To add a camera, you could click the search button to search your network for compatible devices, or click the add button to add a device manually. The search button will open a search window. Click the search button within that window to search for devices on your network. Compatible devices will appear in the list. Select the checkboxes for the devices you want and click Add. Then confirm by clicking OK. You'll see them added to your device list. In some cases, a device may not be recognized by the search button and will not display in the list. A more stable method may be to add your device by clicking the Add button. To begin adding a camera or DVR or NVR using this method, you will need the IP address of the device. To obtain the IP address for your device, it is recommended to download the Amcrest IP Config tool. To get the Amcrest IP Config tool, go to amcrest.com forward slash downloads or return to the All Downloads page and click on the IP Config software link to download the software for PC Windows or Mac OS. Next, click on the IP Config software link to download the software to your computer. Once downloaded, launch the IP Config tool and locate the IP address for your device. The IP address will be listed in the IP field. Make a note of the IP address. 
Then return to the Amcrest Surveillance Pro software and click on the Add button. In the Add menu, enter a name you would like to assign to your device. In this example, we are using the name of the device. Next, in the Method to Add menu, use the default setting IP Domain. Then enter the IP address and TCP port number of the device, which was just obtained using the IPconfig software. The group name will be applied as default group. We will see how to create and modify groups later in this video. Then enter the username and password for the device. If this is the first time using your device, the default username and password will be admin. Click the Save and Continue or Add button to proceed. To ensure proper connectivity, please check the device's online status to the right. A device can initially appear offline due to an incorrect password set by Surveillance Pro to the default admin password. Click the Modify icon under Operation to change it to your device's actual correct password. Also ensure the port number is correct. You'll see that the device now appears online. The device type, model number, and serial number will appear as well. On the Operations tab, you can modify the device. Go to Device Config, manually log out, or delete device. To export a camera, select the checkbox of the camera and click the Export button, followed by clicking the folder icon to select the local path to save the camera's XML file to retrieve later when importing. Then click Backup to store the camera's information on your computer. To import a camera, click the Import button and locate the XML file to retrieve your camera's information. You can also import a camera directly from AmcrestView.com using its login credentials. Please see the user manual for more information. Once located, click Import to import the camera. It will appear in the device list. Now that we have our devices added within Surveillance Pro, let's see how to access other key features, view the live feed, playback recordings, and more. To access Amcrest Surveillance Pro's main features, click on the Home Page button in the top menu. Basic features include Live View, Playback, and Alarm. Live View allows you to add cameras from the default group on the right panel into the windows in the main screen. To manage groups, on the right panel, right-click to create a new group. You can then drag existing cameras from the default group to your new group. The default group cannot be deleted. Right-click again to rename or delete the group. At the bottom, you can configure the views and the number of windows. Select an aspect ratio and enable full screen. Accessing camera-specific functions is simplified within each window, with quick access functions such as Local Record, Snapshot, Audio, Audio Talk, Instant Replay, and Zoom In. Right-clicking a camera window will bring up these functions plus more. On compatible cameras, you can also access Pan-Tilt-Zoom features using the arrows, or by using the mouse control button to click and drag the mouse across the screen and zoom in. With certain models like speed dome cameras, you can adjust the focus and the iris. as well as adjust the speed of the camera's pan and tilt from 1 to 8. Click on More Functions, and you have the ability to set presets for preferred camera positions, access tours, and more functions for multiple cameras. To set a preset for PTZ-capable cameras, use the arrows to set the desired view for the camera. Select the preset number and click the Set Preset button, followed by the Save checkmark to save the preset. You can save up to 128 presets. To go to a preset, first select the preset, then press the Go To button. A tour is a collection of presets. To set a tour, 
click the Set Tour button. Select a tour ID number, create an optional tour name, and select the starting preset of the tour by double clicking under the preset column and then selecting the preset number from the drop down box. 10 seconds is the default stay time for each preset in the tour. This is adjustable from 5 seconds to 43,200 seconds or 12 hours. Add additional presets to the tour by clicking the plus button and select the preset and time again. To add more presets, click the plus icon. To delete a preset, click the X icon. When finished, click the OK button. To start the tour, press the Start button. For additional features on tours, please see our Tours and Views video. Please note, other functions like Pan, Scan, and Pattern are compatible only with Speed Dome cameras. These functions repeat an infinite number of times to allow continuous surveillance. The Pan feature simply does a 360 degree rotation endlessly. This is useful when wanting to monitor a large area over an extended period of time. Scan lets you set in and out or start and end points for your pan, and it moves left to right, then right to left, repeatedly. This is useful to monitor a specific range or area from point to point. Pattern lets you record a series of motions that are time sensitive, which can be saved as a pattern or motion path. You can save up to five patterns. To set a pattern, press the Set Pattern button and use the arrows to make a series of camera movements including zoom, focus, and iris adjustments. This is useful when conducting surveillance for a broad area where panning, tilting, zooming, and pausing between movements are necessary. When finished, click the Set Pattern button again to end the pattern. Press the Start Pattern button and the camera will repeat the same program movements, including pauses, in an endless loop. For additional information about these functions and more on the Live View screen, please see the user manual. Back on the home page, playback is used to search for and playback the recorded video files from the micro SD card, hard disk drive, or PC NVR on your devices. Please note, a storage method must be installed beforehand in order to record and playback recordings. To view recordings for a specific device, select the checkbox next to it and select the day for which you want to view recordings. The interval of the start time and end time must be within a 24 hour period. And click the search button. After clicking search, a playback icon will appear within the window and the recordings for the date range will appear in the timeline below. Below the playback windows are the record and event tabs, which show your recordings in two different ways, on a timeline or as a list. By default, playback shows the record tab first. The record tab lets you view your recordings laid out on a timeline. To begin playback of recordings on the timeline, press the play button in the playback controller and it will start playing your recordings starting with the first. The controller lets you play, pause, and stop the recording and move forward frame by frame, as well as adjust playback speed and volume. Click anywhere within the color shaded areas on the timeline to skip to playback from that point within the segment. And use the scroll button on your mouse to zoom in or out on the timeline. To sync the time on all clips to playback at the same time, click on the sync button to the left of the play button. For more specific playback, click on the event tab, which shows your recordings as a list. Select the start time of your choice by double clicking it, or select it and press the play button. The recording will automatically play in the window. Each segment has a duration and file length. The playback feature also allows you to download recorded videos to your computer. This can be done from either tab. In the Record tab, select a point on the timeline to start playing the video. During playback, click the Scissor Clip tool on the far right to mark the starting point of your clip, and press it again to mark your endpoint. An Export Setup window will appear, and the clip segment will appear orange on the timeline. You can select the path by clicking Browse and selecting a folder to save the clip in. Then select your preferred export format. 
ASF, which is playable on Windows computers, AVI, or MP4. Original format will export in DAV format for playback primarily on Amcrest players such as Smart Player and other surveillance platforms. When finished, click OK to export your clip. To export from the Event tab, locate the desired recording based on its start time, and then select the checkbox of the recording, and click the Save Disk icon. The same Export Setup window will appear as before. Make your selections and click OK to export the full clip. Back on the home page, Alarm is a log within the Surveillance Pro software that shows software notifications and displays alerts here in a list. This is not to be confused with hardware alarms originating directly from the camera or device. We'll go over the actual configurations of these alarms later in this video. Advanced features include Video Wall, Data Report, and Log. Video Wall is a feature that requires specific hardware. For more details on this, please see the Surveillance Pro User Manual. Data Report lets you see a people count feature to see the total number of persons passing by the camera. This limited feature is not available on all devices or models. Log lets you search client login and device log information, which can be exported as an Excel file. Settings include devices, device config, alarm config, tour and task, PC and VR, account, and general. Devices was already covered as a part of the installation process. Device config encompasses several aspects of camera setup. First, select the camera you want to configure. Then select the configuration icon. Let's start with network. The camera's main configurations will take place here. The TCP IP tab is where you can set the camera's IP address to static, which is highly recommended. Remember to click Apply when finished to save your settings. The Connect tab allows you to set max login accounts up to 20. It also lets you get port information in case of wanting to do any kind of port forwarding on the camera. You can adjust the TCP, UDP, HTTP, RTSP, and HTTPS ports associated with a connected device. PPPoE stands for Point-to-Point -point Protocol over Ethernet which is a way for users to access their camera through a specified IP address in this field. Please see the user manual for more information. DDNS is another method for customers to access their camera remotely and requires port forwarding as well. Please see the user manual for more details. The IP filter tab allows for the filtering of IP addresses, either granting them access to the camera via the whitelist tab or blocking them through the blacklist tab. This feature helps make the connected device more secure by limiting remote access only to approved users and blocking certain IP addresses from accessing the camera. Please note, ensure that you do not blacklist yourself by accident. We recommend to keep this feature disabled. If you choose to enable it, please make sure that you exclude the IP address of your computer by whitelisting your camera's IP address. Click Apply or Save to save your settings. The SMTP tab allows for the configuring of email settings, which lets the camera send emails when an alarm is triggered. These are also known as email notifications. First, click the Enable checkbox. In this example, we'll use a Gmail account to demonstrate how to properly set up SMTP. Enter the SMTP server address and port number, which will either be 465 or 587. Next, Enter the email address for the username and password for the email. For sender, enter the email address. The encryption mode for most email accounts, including Gmail, is SSL, or Secure Socket Layer, but is TLS for Hotmail, Microsoft, and AOL. Enter the subject you want for the email alert. It can be something as simple as alert, or the specific alert type, like motion detection. For receiver, enter the email address to whom you want to send the email alert, and remember to click the plus button to add it. Notice it gets added into the box below. You can add multiple recipient email addresses. Interval time is for how often email alerts will be sent. 
Health email checks the health of your email address by sending a health test email to ensure the email address is still active to receive alerts from Surveillance Pro. You can specify the interval in minutes of how often you want the health email to be sent. When finished, be sure to click Apply and Save to save your settings. Most email accounts will send you a critical security alert email as a security measure, informing you that your account was accessed using a third-party app which was blocked. The alerts from Surveillance Pro will be blocked by your email account at first for safety. To get your alerts to go through to your email, you will need to allow these alerts by going into your account's security settings and allowing less secure apps or third-party programs to access your email. Please see the user manual for more information. The FTP tab allows users to set FTP protocol settings to their device. This allows recordings and events to be sent and retained to an external FTP server set by the user. To connect to an FTP server to send recordings, click the Enable checkbox. Then designate a host IP or DDNS address for the FTP server and specify a port number. Enter the username and password for the FTP server, then specify a remote directory to send the recorded media to, set file length in minutes, set upload interval in seconds, set the channel to apply the recording schedule to, then set the days of the week the schedule will apply to, and time periods for FTP by selecting the time frame for the recording and the event type. For more information, please refer to our user manual. Multicast is an advanced feature that sends the camera stream out from one camera to multiple screens at once. This may require more networking configurations to take place. Please see the user manual for more information. The ENCODE icon lets you configure the appearance and visual quality of your video stream and snapshots. Audio video mainly configures mainstream and substream video resolutions, frames per second, and bit rates, as well as audio setup. Snapshot configures the mode, quality, and interval or frequency of snapshots. Overlay allows a user to set overlay options for their connected devices. The most commonly used are time date stamp and channel name display. Image lets you adjust a picture using color mode presets or fine-tune using hue, brightness, contrast, and saturation bars. You can flip the orientation of the camera's view on some models. This can be useful when the camera is mounted upside down on a ceiling or wall. Video Detect allows users to set different detections or triggers, such as video loss, camera masking, and motion detection on their device in order to send notifications. Video loss allows users to be informed any time the camera loses picture due to vandalism or malfunction of the lens, where the camera is unable to capture video. Enable the alarm output channel and then enable the show message function. Camera masking lets you know when someone viciously tampers with the camera, such as masking the lens by putting a cloth over it, or the output video is in one color due to lighting changes in the environment. Enable the alarm output channel, then enable send email, and the system can alert you to guarantee video continuity. Motion detect will be the main feature that most customers will want to customize. It analyzes video, and the system can activate the motion detect alarm when it detects any moving signal that reaches a sensitivity threshold you set here. The checkbox enables this feature, which is enabled by default in most cases. Set Arm Disarm period lets you set the schedule for the alarm. You can use the mouse to draw on the time bar directly, or click the gear icon to set up to six periods in one day. Set Zone lets you set motion detection regions. By default, the entire viewable area is selected with the red colored region, which is suitable for most users. There are four regions you can create red, yellow, blue, and green. To clear the default area and specify your own region, click and hold on the top left box and select the entire region, stopping at the bottom right box, and release. Now to draw a zone, select the colored region you want, 
and create a box by clicking, holding, and dragging down and to the right, then release. Dragging in any other direction to the left or up will not register. You can add multiple regions and have overlap between them. The region name can be changed along with the sensitivity and threshold. Sensitivity is how much motion it takes to trigger a recording. Larger values will trigger motion detection more easily. Threshold is how long motion has to occur to trigger a recording. Larger values will trigger motion detection for larger movements. Smaller values will trigger motion detection more easily. Generally, the higher the sensitivity and the lower the threshold, the more likely motion detection is triggered on the camera when there is even slight movement. The higher the threshold and the lower the sensitivity, the less likely it is for the camera to pick up movement. The default setting of 60 and 5 is suitable for most users. However, it is a good practice to experiment with these settings to find what combination works best for your situation in order to reduce false positives and ensure accurate motion detection response. The sensitivity and threshold settings are region specific for each colored region. PTZ Link lets you activate PTZ movement when motion detection is triggered and can start a preset, a tour, or pattern. Snapshot sends a picture through email. Please make sure you have email set up through SMTP for this feature to enable emails to be sent when an alarm occurs. Some features like alarm upload, buzzer, show message, and SMS are not available on all models. Alarm is for input-output configuration with compatible devices that have input-output connections. Please refer to the user manual for more detailed information on how to connect an external alarm to a compatible device. Abnormality allows users to set their devices for more detection triggers that can be configured. These abnormalities include no storage device, no space, storage device error, offline, IP conflict, MAC address conflict, and illegal access. Please refer to the user manual for more information. Record is where you set the recording schedule for your connected devices. To begin setting up recording settings for your device, a microSD card or PCNVR must be established to store the recordings. Most users will set up the first two, regular being full-time recording and motion detection to record only when motion is detected. This can be set up two different ways. For daily or short-term recordings, simply click and drag on the row of the type of color desired. Refer to the legend for more details. You can simply click and drag across the time schedule for the duration you want. For multiple days setup, click the gear icon to set up. There are a total of six periods that can be set. The checkboxes refer to the type of recording mentioned on the legend, green for regular, yellow for motion detection, and red for alarm. Refer to the legend for more details. Please note, this uses a 24-hour clock. 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 is equal to midnight and 1159 is equal to 235959 you can check the all checkbox for all days to be the same or pick individual days of the week this feature is customizable to split up parts of the day in which to record as well as the type of recording if you would like the record type to record 24/7 the period will remain on 0000000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 to 235959. In this example, we have regular recordings with motion detection that start at midnight and stop at 6:30 a.m. Then start back up again at 8 p.m. and continue overnight until 11:59 p.m. Record control lets you set record control modes for your device. For most users, they want the recording to follow the schedule set in the previous tab. Hard disk drive supports storage on a micro SD card or a local hard drive. Under hard disk drive operation, always have it set to read write. To format the drive, select format disk. Account is where you can add, delete, or edit users of the camera and the type of access they're given. You can create groups of users and manage their access rights as well.
Maintenance is where you set the date and time, daylight savings time, and other features of the camera. Auto maintenance is if you want to set a schedule for auto reboot on a daily basis. Version allows you to view what firmware version is being used, as well as the serial number associated with the connected device. Web launches the web UI using your default browser. And that's it for device configuration. Back on the home page, Alarm Config is where you can create a software alarm scheme, which allows desktop notifications to pop up within Surveillance Pro. However, our recommendation is to set up hardware alarms, which originate from the camera or DVR NVR through the video detect icon. Please note, software alarms will not send alerts through email as shown earlier, but rather display pop-up windows within Surveillance Pro on your screen to push video or record. This is useful for monitoring alerts at a computer, but not for receiving email notifications while away. To create a software alarm, first create a name, and then a description. Then select the alarm type. There are several to choose from. You will find the same most commonly used ones we saw earlier under the Video Detect icon, including Video Loss, Camera Masking, and Motion Detect. In the list, there are also less commonly used alarms, such as Audio Abnormal, Intensity Mutation, Defocus Detection, and External, Intelligent, and Abnormal Alarms. Again, for clarification, these alarms are software alarms that will push a video pop-up on your screen within Surveillance Pro, and will not send an email notification. After selecting the alarm type, select the device from the default group to apply the alarm to, and click Next. For Alarm Link, select the device for which you want to either push video as a pop-up on the screen, and or record video. Then select the preset, and then select the stay time. You can select to push video or record for multiple devices. Then click Next. On this last tab, you can set the schedule for this alarm to be active, and click Confirm to set and enable the software alarm. For more information, please see the user manual. For tour and tasks, please see our user manual and tours and view video for more information. PC NVR is Windows based only and allows your device to record directly to your computer's hard drive. To set up PC NVR on your computer, please refer to the user manual and video for more information. Account lets you create separate users for different roles with unique usernames and passwords. This is useful to grant particular users access to only certain parts of Surveillance Pro, with limited permissions to the software. And General is a software information page that includes system parameters. This has been a walkthrough of the installation and features of Amcrest Surveillance Pro. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel to check out the latest products and instructional videos from Amcrest.